have you been refining and becoming more patient in the selection of your trades, meaning early doors when you first started your trading career, were you just after the excitement and the amount of activity and over the years you've been reducing that activity? And what has it been like that natural evolution of you as a trader over those 30 years span? I think you get better with age uh, generally. Um, I was uh, highly risk profiled, so I, and I was uh, quite clearly, um, and I find this with most people when I dispassionately observe, um, we generally all lack a sense of self-awareness, mm -hmm. uh, and you become more self-aware as, as you age, and you experience certainty only to be proven wrong many, many times over, and you start to realize hang on, I've got to really grasp this word probability game. You know, this is a probability game. Um, sometimes you'll take two or three uh, selections. So we've got, a, we've got a live trading day this Friday and I've got four equities in total. And I'm pretty confident that most of them are going to have real blow-off events. But it's, what's amazing about that is of that four, three might, that would still be amazing if I was lucky enough. And the one I least thought would often be the best one um, and the one I thought was best or maybe be middling and, or, or even the one that fails, uh, something happens. So you, um, it's, it, you, you continually can be shocked by the market. And until you appreciate that, um, you will not have the money management you require for mm -hmm. that. Um, I also went and studied with a mental trader coach to understand biological function. Most people are endorphin infused. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the act of doing nothing means they do not have the excitement or the thrill. They have to be in the game. This is, you know, almost a poker analogy will help with this. They, you know, they're always all in. Um, and of course, being all in means there's nothing on the sidelines to come in when the real chance comes. Um, and you just had to have the adrenaline bugs. So yeah. biologically, people have to become far more conscious and self-aware of um, the grip that trading and the endorsement. It's, it's, it's like the monkey experiments, you know, that you read about uh, where they get random reward. It's called the random reward monkey. You know, if they get a nut every time they do something, there's no real interest. They eat as much as they like. If they never get one, um, they, they stop hitting the button that dispenses. But if you do a real random number, it captivates them. In other words, it's almost like, am I going to have a good day or not? Let's hit the button. Are we getting a nut today or not? Uh, and people, you know, their mood of their day is being determined by the move of the market until you can become dispassionate and mm -hmm. you're actually in a pullback on most of your existing trades and you just see it as a natural course of things and it doesn't lead to a bad day. You're, you're still in development of mastering mindset, which is something we delve in quite extensively as well. Mindset and uh, the great, the, one of the great findings of the person I worked with on mindset is that we continue to think that the, you think of a pyramid and the brain is at the top and it enforces downwards. And I can utterly assert that biology affects mindset to the extent that the brain is um, in reduced capacity. So if you've had four espressos this morning to wake up because you were hitting the tequila slammers last night because an old army buddy was visiting and you've had three hours sleep, um, you can, you can, you know, garner your loins as much as you like, uh, but you've got a lack of glucose in that brain, the quality of your decisions will be uh, far less. And your reaction is you're going to be snatching at a trade long before there's no lack of calmness and there's no mentality. So biology actually is very, very critical. Yeah. So I, I, there's a lot of BS around trading. Then there was, you know, if, if I was in London for an extended period, you know, the notion was that, that there's these flaming Ferrari swigging um, fund managers um, uh, who are chasing strippers and, and all of that. And of course, you would get that crowd and they were usually brokers um, who were placing the orders uh, and just doing the execute. They could go out and get, because they weren't making trade-based decisions. Actually, the fund managers, one of the best, Bolton in the UK, I mean, he's a marathon bio, a triathlete. Uh, he's, you know, he's 47. He's married, very ordinary, yeah. very gray, very sober um smart and cares a lot about his physical well-being yeah. um those are those are the profile of people that are pretty stable and consistent day in day out and thinking about the people that found this composure 
in life and obviously that it leads to better decision making processes and maybe you could think about the way that you teach your own students do you believe that there is a universal way of suppressing adrenaline through meditation through inner discovery or do you believe that each and every single trader have their own journey and from there they can start to uh, you know have realizations about what would be the best course of action so that they can actually keep that down and have a much more you know level headed uh, approach to the markets what's what's your take in there yeah there's two overlays to the mm -hmm. answer in that one is that yes we are all unique human beings and each person starts with a different uh, personality profile and tendency um, but then there are certain overarching real truths, such as what I mentioned, for example, in the biology, uh, the stimulus of a winning trade or, or a crop of winning trades all going up on that day that sees you FOMO chase a mm. little bit more because you're always too small on your winners and you're always too big on your losers. Um, and, you know, that tendency uh, to, to kick in. So there's, there's overarching principles that hold for everybody. Um, but then there's also a journey. We call it, uh, personally, I, I, I say to our premium clients that they're actually going on a self-development program. Mm -hmm. They go and trade. Yes, we aim to help people build wealth in crazy reset times. Uh, and we think our method and approach is best. Uh, and it deals with all things from mindset to selectivity of uh, opportunities and how to manifest them. But you are actually going to learn to know yourself. And you're going to keep brutally being exposed to yourself where you someone is perpetually holding that mirror up to your face and you're having to say, own that, own that. You just did that. You own, own that. And you, and you have to nod and you have to keep owning and then you have to get out of the blueprint ride. So I sometimes talk about, you know, maybe somebody's a mountain bike ride. I've got an e-bike. I'm pedaling around um, bumpy old hills and rounds and enjoy it. Uh, if, you were, if you're in a race and you normally take a certain line, often if you've ever seen a motocross track or a bicycle track, you'll often see the popular taken lines. There's almost a groove on the inside track where everyone is, is, is hitting it. And then you one day follow a pro. And instead of going on that inside line, he actually holds the old outside line, but does zero braking, leans into you know, the berm and just hammers it right the way through and exits on the outside line, but with a lot more pace. And you follow his line just because, and, and, you, and you feel that point of discomfort. You're wanting to lean in and get in the rut that you used to. And then you end up taking the outside line and you come out of the corner a lot quicker and you get to the bottom of the track and you've knocked three seconds off your all time best. Uh, and you think, wow, that's a quantum leap I just did there because, you know, seconds are big. Um, that is a case of traders need to go through that experience. And it's mm -hmm. letting go of comfort behaviors that you have a pattern tendency to consistently repeat. Mm -hmm. And anything that takes you away from that leads to great discomfort. Seek the discomfort. The obstacle is the way. All those concepts are absolutely true. And what we tend to do is even on some of our training, most people um, and this is the psychology of FOMO explained practically. Most people want to remove risk. So they think something may go up. And what they actually do is wait for evidence that it is going up and then chase in, in on that evidence, thinking that they've now eliminated the risk of it could go down or because it's now shown its hand in essence, which is a flawed analogy and is the psychology of FOMO. So inherently they're trying to do that. What they're actually doing is spoiling their risk reward ratio yeah. because the distance from when it's moved. And that's why we always have another catchphrase is, is uh, be early uh, and be right, but have your money management in is um, actually you, you, you want to, you know, dogs chase moving cars. Um, don't be the dog. They get all vexed when they stop. They don't know what to do with them. Know your levels and have the structure. So the whole concept and how we've developed HVF method is I kept seeing highly expansive moves. And I thought I needed to be in there before that. I never felt I wanted to chase it. So this yeah. is sort of Stephen Covey-esque, begin with the end in mind and work backwards. Mm -hmm. And I was asking what actually materially is transpiring prior to the blowout event, because I want to be tight early and with a, a short stop. Um, the short stop means you can take a managed loss if you're wrong. And sometimes directionally, it can be 180 degrees, but you don't lose any more money for being 180 degrees wrong. Yeah. You know? So be bloody wrong. 
Um, be absolutely bloody wrong mm -hmm. if you have to be, uh, because if you're on the ones that you're right, you're getting a highly expansive move and you aren't waiting for what you see as certainty. And this is why people are often bag holders, because no one, nothing really ever goes up in a straight line either. So they're buying relative highs and they're panicking out at relative lows and they're actually getting shaken out. And I've performed that myself. It's a special kind of incompetence, I, re I remember calling it. Um, and, and maybe, and I highlight this, it was the pound actually, and it was a big move between 1.75 and 1.9. And I went out, I wanted to be in the trade, it had my whole setup, but I didn't leave the orders in. And I came back and it started moving and I chased in. And then what you then do is because you weren't in with a, in, from the beginning, and now you feel you owed that profit. This is the mentality. And you'd said it was going to happen and you talked it up and you never, you didn't put it on. You chase in with extra size mm -hmm. to make up for the fact you're late. And then, of course, because you're now chasing the pump, it has its first pullback. And because you went in too big, it's deeply uncomfortable on that pullback and it goes a little bit further than you expect. You panic sell out of the low and almost certainly it starts running back up again. And I actually repeated, I've done this once before, a special kind of incompetence. Um, three successive events, only to watch this thing go to target and to be going net long and lose money in a long market. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely do that. Um, and as I say, it's a special kind of incompetence and you owe it to yourself to do it at least once uh, so that you can see how you can actually lose money uh, being long in a market that goes from 175 to 190. Yep. Uh, and uh, that is because you felt you were owed something and that because you were late. And that's because you got out of shape and out of sync. That means you're ending up buying highs and selling uh, lows and you've got to stop what you're doing. And that you, you, you were talking about what is the remedy for this. So we have an entire triage process um, and there's techniques for becoming uh, more self-aware. So there's such things as having a rear mirror, for example, where you actually see the back of your own head. Physiologically, the stress of a market moving that you're not in shows immediately in your body. So what actually happens is you hunch the lower back you're more like that and you're more intent and you're leaning forward. These are visual cues of self-observance that you can actually detect early. Heart rate goes up. So there's heart rate monitors. Um, I'm actually wearing an aura ring, which uh, measures heart rate variability, which is also the difference between the time in between the beats, uh, which is also for fitness and other things, but it will track if you're getting too more intense. So what you have to recognize is that you're being prompted into flight and fright, uh, flight or fight. I don't know if that came out right. Uh, and that is the sort of saber tooth tiger at your cave uh, emphasis. Uh, and unfortunately, your body and your physiologically and your glucose can't differ differentiate between um, these concepts. Uh, that it's actually not a life or death situation um, because you are triggering and dumping these endorphins and adrenal uh, events. What tends to happen is you either punch um, or you run. So that means you panic out or you get aggressive and you chase in. And neither of those things, uh, the, the amygdala, which saves your life, it's part of your brain to get you up the tree if you come across the saber-toothed tiger real fast and give you that surge of power and energy, is far faster than rational thought. So every time you enter, you have to have breathed, drop the shoulders. You mentioned meditation. It's a great thing to do at the beginning or an end of the day and even between the day. Those are certainly helpful. And you go into your higher self and say, why are we doing this? And one of the questions I have traders ask always on a setup is, how do I be wrong on this view? And it's amazing what an absolute pee on the fire that is. Uh, you probably pee on the barbecue when you ask that question, if you're just about really hot to trot for the trade. Uh, because suddenly now you have to put to yourself a scenario cast where it goes wrong. With HVF method, one of the immediate assumptions is how does this become a, a breakdown instead of a breakup or vice versa? And you draw it. So the actual process of how can this happen and make a plausible case. So you're actually asked to be Hitler's lawyer. Um, on principle and you go and you make a case. He was deeply misunderstood. Um, people don't realize he wanted the best, you know, go and be the thing you least feel like can happen. And that is incredibly balancing because you're dopamine affected, you're biologically affected, and you can only see one thing one way. And this is the concept of certainty. And that leads to the FOMO because the move is the confirmation. Uh, so everything is just screaming confirmation. So by going through that process, you suddenly establish uh, a, a cold spot and a hot spot and then you find the middle point and you say okay 
I've done a reasonable job of actually selling. That could actually happen. What if someone stands up, says something? What if that's a mini head and shoulder we're seeing there and we first have a dip down? And you calm the hell down and you slow down. So we never chase. And the one of the second points, you mentioned the first point, reduce trades by a third. One of the other points that dovetail, because these overlap, our logo is three circles overlapping. So there's a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. Never enter a market order. So now I force you into... Mm -hmm a rational process that is not immediate response because now you have to answer the question, well, at what level am I putting this order? So by giving you more paperwork and admin to do, you can't cash that check so fast and blow it at the casino, if it makes sense. But that's very important admin. It's study and it comes back to the work you do pre-trade. Hold on a minute. We never allowed a market order. So even yeah. if, and, and so many times people think now is the moment and very, very rarely is now the moment, Correct. especially when people mm -hmm. start dropping timeframes, the, the skittishness, you're looking at an amplifier, which is even more hypnotic to induce you into action mm -hmm. because now you're seeing the regular great point the tick. Yeah. So you're feeling what, what is feigning the punch is coming, you know, I need a hook um, and you've got to calm the hell down. Correct. So, a lot of our biggest calls and a lot of our biggest trades are macro technical where the money is made in the sitting, not in the order entry. 